Hello. <laughs> um, I just wanted to start by saying a huge thank you to you all for being here and uh, listening to me tonight, but um, thank you to the organizers of this whole project um, for giving me what really has been um, the opportunity of a lifetime. To be an artist in residence is one thing, but an artist in motion across the country um, is really, has been just amazing. I really have um, been this tourist in my own country that people have kept um, mentioning. Deal for us. I have to say that um, one of the things that keeps happening, that, that happens when you travel <laughs> this much across the country, representing yourself uh, as a poet and saying, oh, je suis l'artiste en motion, and approaching random people on the train, asking them about Canada and uh, their vision of Canada and their sense of identity. They ask me where I'm from, right? Which, uh, for a number of years, out of principle, I just say Canadian, because sometimes I interpret that question, well, the question is coming from a different place. But this time, the where I'm from has been a question that I'm like, do I say Toronto? I was born, you know, j'étais née à Toronto. Est-ce que je dis uh, ben d'ici aussi quand j'étais à Manitoba? Because I lived in Manitoba, I lived in Calgary as a child, uh, and now I live in BC. So I've never, it's been an interesting conversation to say, where am I from, um, even within Canada? So uh, right now I live in Kelowna, and the, the, the language of that land in Kelowna is silks, the, of the uh, Okanagan Nation. And in silks you say lim limped to say thank you. So lim limped, everyone. And um, it was, I think, Richard Simmons, somebody at um, Executive Radio Canada was like, you know, how are you going to um, pull in all of these, all of these perspectives? And, all of these uh, moments that you've had into one poem, and he suggested that I do a haiku. So, no, that's not going to be a haiku. You can't fit all official languages into a haiku. Um, so I've done my best. Language is really, uh, really important. Oh, I should say one. Somebody said, tell them about your name. My parents did it. Okay? My parents did it to me. Yes. Okay. So. Um, I've written a poem that's, that it uses both languages, both official languages, but I also wanted to use another official language, and I don't speak Inuktitut. So, uh, what I've done is I've, I went online and learned a little bit of Inuktitut, uh, what I could, and there was one phrase that you can learn in your conversational Inuktitut that seemed to uh, fit this poem, and that is, what is your birthday? And so my poem is titled, Kangakut Naliutsu Ungugavit. One more time. Kangakut Naliutsu Ungugavit. Which in Yuktitut just means, What is your birthday? There it is. So in four years, we'll celebrate the birthday of our nation, 150 years of Canada. Or should I say, since Confederation. Quelle opportunité. Quel moment de potentiel de réfléchir sur la constitution de notre Canada conceptuel. J'ai tra traversé ce beau pays pendant huit semaines, talking to people about what Canada's big birthday could possibly mean for them, and asking, can 2017 be more than the usual Canada Day scene. Sure, they said, let's supersize the music fest so that kids can rock the day. Faut que quelqu'un écrive une chanson que tout le monde peut apprendre et chanter. Réduisons les prix de voyage pour que tout le monde puisse découvrir notre pays. Produisons davantage des minutes de patrimoine so that we can all know our own history. Produisons des minutes de patrimoine so that we can all know our own history. Now, the speakers at the conference pushed at this concept of we. We, l'histoire, connaître l'histoire c'est bien beau, mais l'histoire selon qui? But one history did keep cropping up in each corner of the nation when people asked me, 
When we celebrate our birthday, or rather 150 years since Confederation, n'y aura-t-il pas des gens qui y pensent plutôt as years of colonization? Not everyone in our community can buy into a national unity if we insist it became fact with the British North America Act. How are we going to deal with that? Mais moi, j'étais renversée d'entendre folks from shore to shore to shore speak about First Nations as the core of our collective identity, our collective history. From the right, something must be done about the Aboriginal situation. Or a lefty, restoring the honor of our country depends on reconciliation. It is in the hearts of the people of this nation now, maintenant, to reconcile the love they bear for provinces and territories with their full awareness of all the unofficial stories and histories that are our Canada. Now, we already know Canadians are proud of our diversity. Our inclusive, welcoming spirit gave birth to policy that in turn gave birth to me. A à elle, et elle, et lui. What I learned from Canadians is that this can't be our grandma's big centennial. This isn't 1967 anymore. We're Gen Xers and millennials. We're much more media savvy. We stream the news, we tweet the scores, we make tags like so random compete with Idle No More. Pour nous, il n'existe pas une identité canadienne fixe. Notre culture et son expression exigent le mashup et le mix. In the 21st century, we refuse to choose one, une official history. Chaque région a ses ambitions and its own histories to tell. How could we choose just one myth quand nous nous trouvons dans un air où les fondations de citoyenneté subissent des tremblements de terre et non seulement sous les manifestations de cet hiver? I think we've all had to think about what it means to be a global citizen and what it means to be Canadian. So, while we will rock out in stadiums to Bieber and Fires Arcadian, we also hunger, we hunger for a vision that embraces both our drive to networked innovation and our shared ecological raw mammalian frailty. Le mosaïque ne fonctionne plus pour décrire nos âmes temporelles changeant non linéaires. Pour moi, Canada est de la terre. Un plat de pétri tectonique et nous des microbes qui bougent, qui divisent, qui se recombinent dans son atmosphère réglementée. And you and I are just interacting cells in that Canadian culture. My conscience, like the river between Ottawa and Hull, I know it doesn't exist anymore, between Ottawa and Hull, sirs, et madame, mes pensées coulent comme une fleuve of consciousness, of two colonizing tongues, une conscience qui passe between the rungs de l'échelle de pouvoir. Pour moi, l'identité n'a jamais été question seulement de blanc et noir. My gene se transform. Life makes genetic changes to my idea of a homeland and to my attitude towards strangers. Elle n'est pas statique, la culture d'une culture, ni statique les membranes autour de nos communautés imaginées, our imagined communities of us and them, d'immigrants et d'indigènes, d'autochtones et purlaines. What holds us together is this arc of sky we're moving in, la tranche de continent called Canada, que l'on habite et sème et mine. Ce n'est pas sang, ni langue qui nous font Canadian. It's that we share our air with these forests, on bois ces glaciers, and through our stories, breathe each other in. So, Que pensez-vous? In 2017, can we celebrate 
a longer memory of what this land has seen. Behind the maple leaf flag saris and inukshuks and poutine, could there ever be, has there ever been, an autochthonous, and that word just means from here, from the land, an autochthonous Canadian dream.